Weird Science. The Precious Years. Sunlight streamed through the transparent metal wall, dancing over the indestructible spun alloy rug. In its golden shaft of light, no specules of dust drifted lazily, for there were none to drift. The atmosphere filter machines kept the air free of germ-carrying dust particles. Beyond the transparent window wall, the city basked in the morning sun. Somewhere inside the room within the walls, perhaps relays clicked and music began to play. The figure on the huge bed stirred and sat up, rubbing its eyes sleeplessly. Elsewhere, other mechanisms, awakened by the figure's awakening, chattered in word. A reminder robot erupted from its wall niche, rolled forward, and rasped. Today is May 3rd, 4152. Today is your shot day. You will report for your longevity shot at precisely 1232 p.m. Medical clinic. Municipal level. Your divorce is final today. Today is your ninth wife's oh, birthday. Oh, shut up, will you? Shut up! The reminder robot, unconcerned, finished out its message and popped back into the wall niche where its tape received the next day's reminder by direct wire from the main reminder mechanism. Martin cursed after it. Today is this, today is that. I know what day it is. Today's the day I get another 10 years of this madness. Breakfast, sir. Your order? The breakfast robot glided forward silently. Coffee brewing within it, toast, browning, pancakes, frying, eggs, juice, waiting to be called for. What? Well, like usual, sir. Anything special this morning, sir? Your order. Get out of here! Get out of here before I smash you to bits! Relays clicked. Tape spun. The breakfast robot backed off towards its wall housing, apologizing. Martin got up. Sorry, you are not hungry this morning, sir. What I need is a drink. Martin strode to the mechanical bar. Sensitive radar beams warned of his approach, swung it wide, revealing crystals, glasses, and a proud collection of amber bottles. Martin poured himself a stiff drink and toasted his reflection in the mirror behind the bar. Well, old boy, here's to you. Here's to your 56 shot day. He drained the glass dry, shivered as it burned down, and poured another. Here's to living to all 550 years of it. The second one went down smoother. Martin stared at his face in the mirror. Now what, Martin Dockin? Now what? What haven't you seen? What haven't you done? What can you do today that you haven't done a million times already? 550 years old, Martin, and you still look 25. They're waiting, Martin, waiting to give you another shot, waiting to keep you looking 25, waiting to keep you living forever. Martin picked up the bottle and flung it at the mirror, shattering it into a thousand shimmering pieces, ripping his reflection apart and setting it cascading to Why the Why don't floor. you die, Martin? What are you waiting for? Why don't you step off of that balcony out there and smash yourself to pieces like this? He stood there, gasping as cleaning robots scurried out from their hiding places and swept up the mirror fragments. Somewhere, a relay sent its message to the repair robots in the cellar far below. Because... Because you haven't got the nerve. Martin dropped into a chair, shaking his head. He scarcely looked up as the repair robots entered with the mirror replacement. So you go on day after day, year after year, until you're so bored with life, you're ready to go out of your mind. But you haven't the nerve to end it all. The robots scurried about, refastening the new mirror into the old brackets. Are you afraid to stop taking the rejuvenation shots because you don't want to grow old and rheumatic and dry up and die? You want to die quickly. Then, the repair robot scurried away. Martin stared at himself in the Look at you. You've had 11 wives. You've tasted a life until it soured, and you've lost your appetite for it. You're bored, Martin Dockin. Bored silly. Why don't you quit? Martin dressed slowly. The wardrobe robot waited patiently until Martin took each article of clothing, then glided away and returned with more. Get out of here. I don't want a, a top coat. A temperature is 41. A top coat is needed. Martin sneered and started toward the door. Solenoid snapped. Martin cursed. The door was locked. The temperature is 41 degrees. 
Our top coach is needed. All right, all right. Martin snatched the coat. The door lock released. Martin went out into the hall. The vacuum lift slid open. A sensitive beam felt of Martin and a loudspeaker within the lift car drone. Good morning, Mr. Dockin. Your level, please. Municipal. Martin stepped inside and sat down on the plush chair. The door slid shut and the lift car hurtled downward. Music played soft, Hello, the voice Peter announced. Hello, Peter, it's Adrian, my third wife at 8 p.m. A facility comes in play in the Paul Wagner program at 9. The robot fight starts at 10 in the amphitheater. Lunch is now being served in all dining halls. <laughs> The lift door slid open. The music faded. The voice was curt. Hello, Mr. Dockin. Thanks. The municipal level's moving corridors were jammed with chattering people. Martin stepped to the westbound belt and eyed a blonde. Somewhere down deep, a spark tried to ignite a flame that had long ago flickered and died. I'm a living corpse. That's what I am. I beg your pardon? She smiled at him. A century of two ago, her beauty might have meant something to Martin. When one tires of everything in time, he shook his head. Sorry, I, I was just muttering to myself. Oh, excuse me. The medical clinic ramp swept toward them. They both stepped off the corridor belt. Going for your reju shots too? Yes. Well, here's Williams. You're down the hall. Martin. Opened the door and disappeared beyond it. He shrugged. She was beautiful, all right, but what was the use? If he'd make a play for her, it would be the same. Always the same. The novelty was gone. Your name and age, please. Martin Dakin, 550. The robot got up. Follow me, please. But the robot led Martin past the shot machines to a door marked private. It knocked and swung it open. What's this all about? He sat at a desk piled high with records. He glanced up at Martin and motioned to a chair beside it. Sit down, Mr. Dockin. What is this? I came for my redo shot. Why the interview? Mr. Dockin, when a member of our society reaches the age 550, we offer him an opportunity to die if he wants to badly enough. To die? Exactly. We have found in our experiences through the centuries that people endowed with eternal youth divide into two classes, those that accept it and enjoy it, and those that tire of it and find it eventually boring and dull. To the latter, we offer a chance to an end the boredom, painlessly. You found eternal youth is not the utopia you thought it would be? If you're bored with living, yet have the nerve to end your boredom by your own hand. We will end it for you, suddenly, without pain. Yes, yes, I can't stand it any longer. Understand this, Mr. Dakan. Once you sign up, you cannot back out. Think it over carefully. Your decision is final. You may leave, go back to your eternal life, or may sign the paper and go through that door. What awaits beyond is the end of eternal life. The end of boredom. I'll sign it. I want to. There's nothing left for me. The man at the desk slid the paper forward. He handed Martin the pen. Be sure, Mr. Dakin. There's no backing out. I'm sure. There. Martin hesitated at the door. Was he to step into an abyss and plunge to his death? Was he to swing it open and be blasted to smithereens? What did it matter, anyway? This is what he wanted. He stepped inside. The room was dimly lit. It was empty, save for a figure seated in one corner. Martin looked around. The figure lifted his head and looked at him. It was the blonde girl from the corridor belt. You? Hello. Did you sign up too? Martin nodded. Somewhere down deep, the flame flickered faintly. Yes, yes, but why you? You're, you're beautiful. Would my beauty make my life any more exciting? Would it help end my boredom? Martin shrugged. I've had seven husbands. I've done everything, seen everything, lived until life itself no longer mattered. I know what you mean. Well, what happens now? She looked at him. We die, I guess. That's what we want, isn't it? We want a quick end to this boredom. Yes, that's what we want. 
funny. For centuries, mankind has striven to attain this perfect goal, eternal youth, and now that we have it, we don't want it. Don't you see? In the old days, life was a challenge. Every day was a battle for survival. People had to work to eat. Today, everything is done for us. Today, everything is easy. Look what has happened to love. To marriage. I know. I've had 11 wives. I thought I loved each of them, but the love seemed faded. We were divorced 11 times, married, and divorced. Love isn't all physical. There's something more. It's two people battling together, fighting for each other, for the right to enjoy the physical. No battle. No enjoyment. The thrill of the conquest is done. The thrill of the conquest is gone today. I guess you're right. In the old days, a man and a woman married and stayed together until death. That's because death was always so close. The battle included death. How long they have? 50, 60 years? A whole life together to live in 50 or 60 years. No wonder each woman was so precious. No wonder they fought and savored each minute, loving and enjoying it. Today a man knows that his youth is eternal. Those precious moments don't exist. They sat there in the dimness and they talked an hour past to the flame flare. What are you smiling at, Martin? <laughs> I'm smiling at myself, Jean. Once upon a time, Something died inside me. I think it was my ability to ever love someone again. She moved closer to him, feeling his warmth. And now that something has come alive again? Has it, Martin? Because that's what happened to me. Jean, I, I... Suddenly, they were in each other's arms. And then she was crying and laughing at the same time. Don't you see, Martin? We're going to die. That's why we've come alive again. Inevitable death makes you want to live. We're not going to die, Jane. No, not when we found each other. They can't. No backing out. Remember, the end of Borden. Don't fight it, Martin. If we go back there, I'll be number 12 for you. That's all. Uh, I, I guess you're right. They were in each other's arms, defiant. With a paddle open and the man from the death stepped in, brandishing the strange weapon. I see you are yes. 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 There was a click. That's all. Just a click. And the darkness closed in as they slumped to the floor. The man from the desk grinned. The end of... They awoke almost the same instant, side by side, in their shot couches. There was a deadly silence around them. They looked at each other. Martin, darling? Jean, we're not dead. A relay clicked. A tape glided through a hidden machine. You are in a rocket ship, my children. Your destination has been automatically preset. It is a distant colony of Earth's wild and untamed. The battle, Martin. I hear it, Jane. The voice continued. We will live our lives out of that planet. Your natural lives. We did not receive your reju shots, so age will come to you. Death, Martin. It will still be inevitable. Yes, Jane. There is much work waiting for you, my children. The colonists need you. They are others like yourselves who desire to escape from boredom. The tape clicked off. Silence closed in. Jean turned to Martin. Darling, it is the challenge I spoke about. Precious the moments to for the right to and enjoy together. The ship roared out, and out into space. Behind it, green earth faded. Before it, stars twinkled in the black gulf of infinity. Inside the ship, 
Martin and Jean held each other close, ready for the coming struggle. The end.